Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Life. Today, we are looking at Matthew 26, verses 6 through 13. There's a lot happening um, in this passage right here. This is not long before the crucifixion. Jesus is with the disciples, and you probably know this account that there's a woman that comes to him with an alabaster box of ointment. This is Mary of Bethany coming to anoint Christ. The anointment um, or the ointment, sorry, that um, she has here, we're told by the disciples that it is about a year's wages. This was a very expensive, very precious oil, and Mary knew that. She was not concerned with the cost. She was concerned with her worship. Her desire for this oil was nothing less than anointing Christ. She poured it on his head, and the disciples got upset. They were pointing, pointing out how valuable this was and that it could have been used for something else. They could have sold it and used that money to feed the poor. There was all these other things, but to Mary, this was the best use of the oil. The disciples at that moment were judging someone else's worship based on what they thought. Now, this is also something um, that's becoming more of an issue today in this progressive Christianity culture. So, I'm not going to get off on don't judge anyone ever, okay? Scripture says we are to judge, we are to know them by their fruits, we are to judge the spirits, um, because if not, we're going to get out in left field. We are to judge things against the Bible. So if something is unbiblical, then it's unbiblical. It's sin, and we're not to get into that. So I am not going to say that every form of worship is true worship. It's not. We see that in the Scripture. You know, the Pharisees were close to... Christ, with the words of their mouth, they were speaking Christian terms. Their, their words sounded like worship, but their heart was far from him. So, therefore, it was to show, and honestly, it was a mockery. So, there is wrong worship, okay? God says that he is spirit, and we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. So, I'm not going to condone and say that, oh, as long as someone says, well, this is how I worship, that it's okay. It's not. Scripture says that. So, we're not going there, okay? But Mary's worship was from the heart, and it was reverent, okay, toward Christ. It was glorifying Him and the Father, and this, this was right. This was true worship, but the disciples we're only looking at the value of that oil. This um, moment, they told her that it was a waste, but it wasn't. I don't know about you, but I probably would have been upset if someone ever told me that something that I was giving to the Lord, something that I was doing for the Lord, was just a waste of time. <clears throat> it's not if it's what he said to do, if it is honoring him and glorifying him biblically. Mary was not doing anything wrong. The ointment was precious. She had to save and work a lot to get it. This ointment represents her work and her wealth, and she was giving all she had to Christ. That is worship. That is what we are supposed to do. Her worship was not a waste. Going to church on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, making that sacrifice of time, sacrifice of energy, um, to go, sacrificing whatever it is in your schedule that you would rather be doing, is not a waste. Spending time in your Bible every day, spending time in prayer every day, is not a waste. The world says it's a waste, but it's not. Christ wants us. You know, we're supposed to tithe our money. Um, I believe we're supposed to tithe our time, too. You know, God is supposed to have the preeminence in all areas of our life. This is our worship. Um, when Mary came to her, came to Christ with her ointment, she was not looking at him saying, I have to do this and this is such a waste and I would rather keep this oil. She wasn't resentful. You know, often we go to church, we put that money in the offering plate and we're a little resentful because God said, I have to tithe. Okay. God loves a cheerful giver. Give her of your time. Give her of your talents. Give her of your resources, whatever it is, it's not just money, but this represented her money. It represented her work, which was her time, her effort, her energy. Um, you know, having that new family to church over for coffee or for dinner, it's time, it's resources, it's preparation, it's effort, but that's also worship, 
okay? You're loving on God's people. You're making them feel welcome. You are being hospitable. That is what God wants for us. This was definitely not a waste. Mary had an I get to attitude, not an I have to attitude because she didn't have to. This was an act of sincere worship. Our worship, when it honors and glorifies the Lord, is also not a waste. There's nothing we can do better with our time than to be worshiping God, seeing him as holy, high, and lifted up, telling others about him, and worshiping him as the God that he is. Serving God is never a waste, even if the results are not immediate. Every time that you minister to someone, you pray for someone, you give the gospel to someone, even if there's not immediate results, your efforts are not a waste. We know that um, Paul talked about this and he said, you know, one plants, one waters, and God gives the increase. It's okay if all you do is plant or water and you don't see the increase. Let God do that. But that does not mean that your efforts are a waste. That step is needed in the heart of that person to get them to Christ when the Holy Spirit leads and the time is right. I hope that you will choose to use your work, your wealth, and your worship to the honor and glory of God. It is never a waste. Even if the results are not immediate, even if no one else agrees, it's not a waste. Keep worshiping and honoring him in all that you do. Until next time, stay in the word, stay close to the shepherd, and let him lead you in paths of righteousness.